Hey guys, it's Josh Sterney Ridge Farmer and welcome to the farm vlog today. I want to talk to you about a few things, but first we're going to check out the chickens. This is going to be kind of a walk around uh, talk day today. Not a lot going on. Uh, I'm experiencing a little bit of lower back pain right now, so we're going to kind of take it easy. I think it's from sitting in the chair too much in the evening times. They say sitting in chairs is uh, a lot of the reason why we have back pain, so I'm getting up, getting out, and getting moving. Got to get me a new office chair. If anybody knows of a good one, put it in the comments. So come along with me, guys. First things first, we got to check on our baby birds that we got yesterday. See how they're doing. Look at that. Looks like they're doing great. Getting into the food and water. That's pretty awesome. Got plenty of water in there? Yep, yeah, got plenty of water for today. Looks like your baby birds are doing awesome. I'm pretty happy with that. Keep a close eye on your baby birds for the first few days just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, you don't need to medicate the water. There's a lot of people out there that tell you different things you can put in the water. I just have well water, so my water's crisp, clean, and delicious, so they'll be fine. Anyhow, keep a close eye on them pretty much the whole time you have them in the brooder which is the little indoor box there. Today it's 74 degrees outside and awesome. Just totally beautiful. So we're gonna walk down and check on the big chickens and make sure they're cool. Got plenty of food and everything and see if I can catch that rooster crowing. Then we're gonna talk to you a little bit about farming and homesteading. Hey birdie birds. Hey birdies. So the little chickies seem to be doing pretty good. I want to show you something guys. We're in February here and February in North Carolina it's not really the time for fruit trees to start blooming and I'll show you my plum tree here. Kind of a bummer because they'll get a freeze and I won't get any fruit this year. So let's show it to you. So all these are little blooms right here getting ready to flower out. Not cool. Uh, this whole tree is just covered with blooms which would be totally awesome if we were in April. But we're not in April. so. Look out Frost. Frost is going to get them, guys. Frost is going to get them. Well, I've given you teaser after teaser after teaser about planting and marking the garden. Well, we've already started marking the garden. Basically, what I'll do is run a mason string the length of the garden here. And I have my rows spaced 42 inches apart. 42 inches has been the magic number for me. Uh, you could do 36. You could do whatever you wanted to do. But 42 seems to be the magic number to me. I can get my tiller through there, and that way I till out the uh, weeds. I can also drive my tractor through there if I want to cultivate it. And this is kind of a big garden, but I don't need to use every square inch of it. So if you're gardening for square footage, then this probably won't work for you. But what we've already got planted here is some broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage. These are kind of cold weather crops and we're also going to put our potatoes in the ground either today or tomorrow and that'll give them a little time to get started so we can have some nice delicious uh, homegrown potatoes. So the way I mark this out is I take steaks that you can buy at any hardware store and take a measurement. Basically we measured off of the chicken coop uh, three feet and we took two different measurements off the chicken coop three feet and then we matched our string up to that measurement ran it all the way to the end of the garden okay the garden is probably I'm gonna say 175 feet long something like that so it's a pretty big garden but hey we're gonna grow a bunch of vegetables and whatever we don't grow we feed to the chickens and hopefully we'll have some pigs soon too so we'll feed them to the pigs too got plenty of uses for old vegetables so can't waste it here's what we've got and basically I staked it all out. I'll take you for a walk around the uh, garden where I've got it marked out here. So this is our marking system. Basically I just line up uh, stakes all the way down through here and we run one continuous string all the way up to the end of the garden here. And you can see my footprints. Basically your footprints will kind of cut a ditch for the water to run into and you'll have uh, awesome little rows all planned out all straight as an arrow so when people see your garden they're like whoa your garden looks great anyhow that's how we mark the garden this thing look at it now because in about two months 
It's gonna be insane. Jurassic Park Garden. I love it. Guys, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about homesteading, okay? Things that you need to think about. You guys might be watching this channel right now and thinking, oh, this guy's got neat ideas, this guy's got cool stuff going on. Man, I wish I could homestead, I wish I could buy a farm and do this. Well, you can, but you've got to make some sacrifices. And I wanted to talk to you about some ideas, some sacrifices that you might have to make, some thoughts on buying land, some thoughts on building your home, uh, and just all around what a lot of the costs are associated with farming. And chickens are pretty low cost. <laughs> First, we'll start with what do you want to do? So what do you want to do with your farm? Do you want to have a place for your kids to grow up outside and play football in the yard? Or do you uh, have NFL Sunday ticket and you just want to sit in the couch on Sunday and watch TV? Because if you do, I don't know. You might want to consider another option because you're not going to be sitting on the couch on Sunday watching football games all day. I can tell you that. Not if you've got 100 acres. What you need to consider is, number one, what do I want to do? Do I want to grow veggies for the family? Do I want to have some horses? Do I want to have goats, pigs, cows? What do I want to do? Do I want to hunt? Do I want hunting property? What kind of homestead do I want to have? Do I want to have a few backyard chickens, a little garden, go to work, come home, play in the garden on the weekends? What do you want to do, okay? So things to consider when you're looking at land. You need to think about water. Water, 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 water. I cannot say it enough. Water. Whether your land is very hilly, whether you have creeks, whether you have ponds, how many creeks do you have? What are your sources of water? Drilling a well. Well, you have a rural property, you're gonna have to drill a well. You need to be thinking about, hey, where am I gonna put my well? Is it in close proximity to my barn? Is it in close proximity to my house? You gotta plan this stuff out because if you don't, it's gonna add additional expense later on in your uh, farmstead. So we're farmsteading here, homesteading, and we're basically trying to be self-sufficient. We're having our garden so we can have all of our vegetables and do a lot of canning this year. We've raised animals so that we can eat them or that they can uh, help to revitalize the land. And we've got our chickens for our eggs. We just want to have a nice place to go home to that's very private. When we set out to buy land, we set out to buy 10 to 40 acres. That's what our plan was. Now we've got 150 acres and we're looking at more land. Once you get up in the country, the tendency is to want as much privacy as you possibly can. So think privacy. Think noise. What kind of noises do you hear? Go, we looked at so many different places. We went and sat and just waited in silence to hear the noises at different times of day. So we sat from like three to four, from five to six, on these other places that we looked at, and they were horrible. It was uh, like freeway traffic and stuff like that. And guys, you just don't wanna hear that crap. We've got a little bit of train noise here and a slight amount of highway noise, but the highway's five miles away. And every once in a while you can hear like a tractor trailer or something like that. So noise is a factor, guys. Think about noise think about privacy okay you also need to think about the lay of your land how does your land lay is it hilly is it flat i'd lean more towards buying flat land than i would hilly land most of our land is fairly hilly but it's rolling hills not drop off steep drop offs we've got one spot down here where the creek is that's a pretty steep drop off in a really rocky area i don't know it's pretty it's cool but it's useless it's absolutely useless except for something to look at so Think about that kind of stuff. When you get ready to build your house, or if you go the route we did, which was get a mobile home, put it on here, and that way you get time, you buy yourself time to plan this stuff out, think about water. Which way is water gonna go? Divert water from where your home will be, okay guys? Divert water. Water, 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 I cannot say it enough. Water is great, water is awesome, water is horrible, water can destroy everything you have. So water is your best friend and your worst enemy. Think about water on your homestead. It is the most important thing. The next thing you need to consider when you're buying a homestead is, do I want to commute? If you don't want to commute and you want to live out in the country and you work in the city, then you should not have a homestead. You can do this kind of stuff in your backyard, even in a small backyard. We started with a third of an acre and went to 150 acres. 
what an absolutely overwhelming thing. It's like starting in a little creek and going to the Grand Canyon, man. It just blows your mind how much thought has to go into this stuff. You have to think about every blade of grass on 150 acres. It's a lot to think about. So if you're considering buying a homestead or homesteading, think about what you can do in your own backyard first. If that's okay, then use your own backyard. There's a lot of stuff you can do in your own backyard. Having a large piece of land is not for everybody. We've got a lot of money tied up in tractors, equipment, buildings, and we're just getting started. So, just for example, we've got $50,000 in a tractor and a gator. We've got a $10,000 lawnmower, okay? Just because it takes me four and a half hours to mow the yard here. You've got to think about this. This is time consuming very time consuming okay so now that we've got the ten thousand dollar lawnmower it only takes me 45 minutes which is rad so when you go to purchase land when you go and look at land you want to go and do what we did we talked to the neighbors we went to each neighbor's house up here and talked to them we found out what kind of people they were uh, we only have one neighbor down at the end of our road down here and we went down and talked to him we wanted to know what kind of people we were dealing with and we found out that these are wonderful people. Everybody around us is great, but you might not have that. Down the road here, we've got some trailer parks. Trailer parks, I, you know, it doesn't bother me if you live in a trailer park. I lived in a trailer park. It's okay. It's a good way to get a start in a life. Um, it's a good way to live sometimes if you live in a clean place. But some trailer parks can be really bad. Check out your neighbor's houses is what I'm saying. Doesn't matter about a trailer. It doesn't matter about a house. If they keep their place up, most of the time, if they're nice and neat on the outside, they're nice and neat on the inside, and they're thinking nice and neat. And they're not going to be the kind of people that would tear up your place or call the cops on you if you had something loud going on. Because once in a while, we like to play loud music down here, have a little fun, do a little bonfire, and we don't want our neighbors calling the cops. They would never, ever do that. They look out for us. That's what you want. So last but not least, I would say, if you're looking at land, walk the land, okay guys? Put on some jeans, put on your boots, put on stuff that you can get all down and dirty and walk the land and walk as much of it as you possibly can. Understand the lay of the land. We bought this first 60 acres and I couldn't tell whether it was one hill or two hills that I owned over or three hills. I couldn't tell. So we walked it. Make sure there, there is a recent survey. A recent survey will give you the lines that you can walk. Walk all the property lines. Make sure you're not bordering some crazy uh, quarry or something that you don't want to be near, okay? A dump or something like that. Something that you don't know about. Go on the computer, look at the aerial, look at the satellite pictures, walk your lines, and take a look at what you've got, okay? walk and dream a little bit there's nothing wrong with dreaming a little bit guys so those are a few suggestions that i have if you're thinking about buying land okay there are other suggestions that i have once you do have land but i would say in review guys think about the lay of the land number one look for something that's mostly flat if you can find it okay number two when this also applies to the flatness of the land water you need some creeks at least one creek if possible on your land if you're wanting to have some animals um, or if you want to back up water source if you're a prepper type person okay we've got five creeks and three springs on our land right here water bubbles up out of the out of the ground all over everywhere think water once again if there's no home on the property and you go to build think water do not let water run towards your house okay divert water away from everything that you want to hang on to okay Things also to think about, privacy, 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 noise, think about noise, go and look at your property at different times of day and listen to the noises that you hear, okay? So these are just a few things that I think you should think of. I thank you for watching the vlog today, guys. There's not a whole lot going on. I'm going to go on up and check on the goats. Looks like our baby chicks are doing great, so don't forget to check out the rest of the channel, check out the rest of the vlogs, subscribe to the channel, guys. You won't regret it. Watch us grow into a place that is wonderful. Thanks again. This is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wild.